So, let's be honest. Everybody loves the transfer window. It fills the back pages of every newspaper around the world. It has TV shows dedicated solely to them. And even the most followed journalist in the world is known only for transfers. However, nothing gets people excited and talking as much as a world record transfer. We're nearing seven years since the last time it was broken, and I thought it would be the perfect time to look back at the 40 players whom have held the record and analyse what it can tell us about the evolution of the beautiful game. We must first begin with the birth of football transfers, all the way back in 1885, with the professionalisation of the English game. Prior to this, football was not a legal profession, with it being illegal for footballers to be paid to play. This didn't stop clubs making under-the-counter payments, however, to entice their best players to come and play for them. As these players were not officially contracted, they were able to move clubs whenever and wherever they wanted to, leaving clubs with little power and almost no cohesion on a season-to-season -season basis. The Football Association recognised the problem, resulting in the professionalisation of football in 1885, which required all professional players to be registered with the FA, birthing the first form of the transfer system. The most noticeable difference from the system recognised today was that there were no transfer windows, rather players could move throughout the year and clubs were still able to demand a fee for a player even if their contract had expired, meaning the power had firmly swung from the players to the clubs. This brings us on to the first player to be officially recognised as the record transfer holder, Willie Groves, who was transferred from West Brom to Aston Villa in 1893 for a deal worth £100. The previous season, Aston Villa were chasing their second major honour, when in the FA Cup final, they were humbled 3-0 by a West Bromwich side with Willie Groves, a Scottish forward, registering two assists in the final. In response, Aston Villa prized away West Brom's two best players, Willie Groves and Jack Reynolds, an English midfielder who scored the opener in the FA Cup final in a deal worth £50. The new transfer system was still under intense scrutiny with laws and etiquette around them still being unclear. West Brom lodged a complaint to the FA alleging that the deal for Groves involved illegal poaching. The complaint was ultimately held up by the FA with Aston Villa being forced to pay a £25 fine in addition to the original £100 for Groves. This fee was ultimately good investments, however, for the villains, with them winning their first ever league title in 93-94, whilst West Brom lurched to 8th. The first record transfer marked the drama and controversy which would mark the insane future of football transfers. Willie Grove's record lasted just three years, with Aston Villa once again breaking their record in a deal which would mark the biggest single proportional jump in transfer history with a 350% jump to £350. The record was for small Heath forward Fred Weldon, who, despite being just the second record transfer ever, was by all metrics one of the most successful. In his first season at Villa, he was their top scorer with 22 goals, leading them to a historic FA Cup and league double before winning another two league titles in his other three seasons at the club. He achieved this success as a footballer, whilst also being a professional cricketer during the summer. Weldon's record lasted an impressive seven years, until Small Heath signed Barnsley inside forward Ben Green for £500. Green's record would last just over a year, with the first member of an elite exclusive club, Alf Common, taking his record away in a deal worth £520 when he moved back to his hometown club Sunderland from Sheffield United. His record wouldn't even last a year, with Andy McCombie's move also in 1904 from Sunderland to Newcastle breaking his record by £180. So why did I say Common was in a not-so-common club? This was because just a year later he broke the transferred record, once again, when he joined Middlesbrough in a move for £1,000. There were only four players in the history of football to break the record twice, and two of those are in the pantheon of greats. So for Common, a forward who scored just 135 goals in 413 career games, and interestingly never won a trophy at either of the clubs he broke the transfer record to go to, to be one of just four players to achieve this record twice is a great achievement. His second record lasted eight years, finally beaten 
1913 by West Ham inside forward Danny Shea, who joined Blackburn in a deal worth £2,000. The record was broken one more time before World War I, with Scottish forward Percy Dawson moving to Blackburn for £2,500. World War I brought a four-year pause to a professional football in England, but it didn't take long post the war for the game to find its feet once again, with the record being broken as early as 1920, when David Jack moved from Plymouth to Bolton for £3,500. This would begin a period of mass growth for the sport, with the record being broken four times in the next five years, reaching £6,500 in 1925 when Bob Kelly moved from Burnley to Sunderland. His record would be beaten in 1928, when Bolton inside forward David Jack moved to Arsenal for £10,890. Wait a minute, is that the same guy who broke the record all the way back in 1920? In fact it is. David Jack was able to break the transfer record twice, but unlike the other three members who broke it twice, within two years, Jack broke the record eight years after doing it the first time. Interestingly, the first time he broke the record, he had only played football in the third division of English football that highlights the regard he was held in straight after the war. He spent eight seasons with Bolton forming a formidable partnership with fellow Bolton icon Joe Smith. While with Bolton, he made history by being the first person to score a goal at Wembley in the 1923 FA Cup final, which Bolton won 2-0. He continued his success with Bolton, winning the FA Cup final once again in 1926, scoring the only goal in a 1-0 win over Manchester City. He was the club's top scorer in five of his eight seasons, still placing third in their all-time scoring list, one place behind his great partner, Joe Smith. He left Bolton due to the club's financial troubles, although his time at Arsenal would only continue his illustrious career. He became the first person to win the FA Cup at Wembley with two different clubs in 1930 and recorded his personal best of 34 goals in Arsenal's first ever title winning campaign in 1930-31. He also won two more titles whilst he was at Arsenal. Despite being 30 years old when he joined and only playing for six seasons, Jack still places in Arsenal's top 10 all-time goalscorers with a better goal to game ratio than Robin Van Persie. David Jack is one of England's most accomplished and successful players of all time, who truly earned his place as a two-time transfer record holder. To speak about the next record breaker, we need to take a step outside of Britain for the first time and quickly explain the rise of football from English private schools to the most popular sport in the world. First, like lots of the most popular sports in the world today, British colonialism spread the grain across the world. However, unlike sports like cricket, hockey and rugby, the game is extremely accessible and simple to play. Football is a sport that requires just a ball to kick and can be played anywhere, whereas a sport like rugby would be extremely unsafe to play on the streets of Sao Paulo and the equipment needed to play cricket and hockey is not accessible for millions of people. In 1923, these were the countries which had professionalised football. A decade later, these were the countries who had professionalised it. Arguably the most significant decade in the history of football, which also saw the first World Cup, football was now a global game, with England not having the monopoly over the sport which it once had. This was typified by Bernabe's Ferreira's move from Tigre to Rio Plate for more than double David Jack's transfer record. One of the deadliest finishes in South American football, Ferreira had scored 45 goals in 43 games for Tigre before making the move to River Plate, who had a growing reputation of spending big sums, earning the nickname the Millionaires. His time at River Plate was wildly successful, scoring 187 goals in 185 games, winning three league titles, including reaching his peak in the 1932 title winning campaign, where he scored 43 goals. He still sits sixth in the Primera Division all-time scoring list, with by far the best goal-to-game ratio of anyone in the top 20. His record was also historic, lasting a record 17 years, more than double anyone else. The main reason for this was the Great Depression of the 1930s and the Second World War, but it was finally beaten by Johnny Morris in 1949, seeing the record return to England once again. 
The record would be beaten three more times in the next two years, reaching a price tag of £34,500 in 1951, when Jackie Sewell left Notts County for Sheffield Wednesday. Sewell, a forward, will score slightly over a goal every other game at Wednesday during his five-year spell at the club, as well as playing international football for England and Zambia. However, his significance was not known at the time, because this was the last time an English club would break the transfer record for 45 years. It was now Italia time. It's me, Mario. I'm a Luigi. Pizza. Football in Italy had been on a steady rise since their back-to-back -back World Cup wins in 1934 and 1938, with the 1950s marking the decade in which they established themselves as the financially dominant power of world football. Although Real Madrid and Benfica won the first seven European Cups between them and the Brazilian league was regarded as the best, highlighted by Brazil's back-to-back -back World Cup wins in 1958 and 1962, made up solely of players playing in the Brazilian league. The first Serie A team to break the record was Napoli, with the signing of Swedish striker Hass Jepsen in 1952 for £52,000. A star of the 1950 World Cup, where he scored twice as Sweden finished third, Jepsen was one of the first stars to ply his trade overseas, being the second Swedish player to play in England when he moved to Notts County in 1951. After scoring nine in just 11 appearances for the county, he made the move to Atalanta in Italy, where his goal-scoring form continued, scoring 22 in 27. This form convinced a highly ambitious Napoli to outlay a world record transfer fee for the striker. His time in Napoli was fine yet unremarkable, scoring 52 in 112, never winning a trophy and slipping down the table each year he was at the club, almost getting relegated in his final year. It took just two years for the record to be broken again, when AC Milan signed Juan Alberto Schiffino a hero of the Uruguay side that won the 1950 World Cup. Schiaffino was a truly special playmaker, leading Milan to three titles in his six years at the club, an icon of the Uruguayan game, being voted the best Uruguayan player of the 20th century by the International Federation of Football History and Statistics, and even managing the side for two years during the 1970s. His record would be beaten by another great South American, Omar Savori, three years later, who would go on to win three league titles and three Coppa Italias with Juventus, as well as being the first South American-born player to win the Ballon d'Or in 1961. The 1960 Ballon d'Or winner, Luis Suarez, would break the transfer record in 1961, when he left Barcelona for Inter Milan in the first six-figure fee in football history. Suarez, Spain's greatest player of the 20th century, became the first player from his country to play in Serie A. The transfer, which saw Suarez reunite with his former manager, Helena Herrera, has been considered one of the most controversial decisions in Barcelona's history, as the Catalan club's board reportedly aimed to maximize revenue in order to repay part of their financial debts, as well as complete the construction of the Camp Nou. During his time in Milan, Suarez transitioned from an attacking midfielder to one of the first deep-lying playmakers in football history, leading Inter Milan to three league titles and two European Cups during his nine years at the club. Over the next seven years, the record would be broken three more times by Serie A clubs. However, 1973 saw the transfer record leave Italy for the first time in 22 years when Barcelona signed one of the most impactful men in football history, Johan Cruyff, in a deal worth £922,000. An already established all-time great, Cruyff had just clinched a third consecutive European Cup with Ajax, where he scored 193 goals in 245 matches, also winning the 1971 Ballon d'Or, whilst playing for the greatest football team the world had ever seen in that point of time. He led Barcelona to their first title since 1960, including a famous 5-0 win over Real Madrid at the Santiago Bernabeu. He would also add a second and third Ballon d'Or during a spell at Barcelona, with him leaving the club in 1978 as a true club icon. However, his time as a player at Barcelona is still somehow overshadowed by his time as a manager, where he completely revolutionised the philosophy of the club 
winning four league titles and claiming their first ever Champions League. He is also the main man responsible for prioritizing La Masia, famously bringing through and mentoring Pep Guardiola and setting the conditions for the likes of Xavi, Iniesta and Messi to reach their full potentials. Giuseppe Savordi would become the first million pound footballer in 1975, with Paolo Rossi beating his record a year later. However, Barcelona broke the transfer record once again in 1982, this time for an Argentine sensation, Diego Armando Maradona, for three million pounds. A player who was already adored in Argentina, Maradona agreed to join Barcelona just before the 92 World Cup in Spain. It's hard to understand today, but this World Cup was the first time that the majority of people around the world ever saw Maradona play, including most Barcelona fans. Therefore, after failing to truly shine in the tournament, his most memorable moment came in Argentina's second round matchup with great rivals Brazil. Argentina trailed 3-0 with their attempted defense of their crown looking dead in the water, when, following a high challenge on Brazilian substitute Batista on Argentina defender Juan Barbas, Maradona kicked Batista in the midriff and was sent off. The game's commentator, Jean Helm, remarked, Diego Maradona looked almost in tears there. He's being roundly booed here in Barcelona. What a tragic end to Maradona's World Cup. He's about to come and play in Barcelona, but this must be the most tragic moment of his career so far. A lot of Barcelona fans' first impression of Maradona weren't great. Maradona scored 22 in 36 for Barcelona and became the first Barcelona player to ever receive a round of applause at the Bernabeu. But unfortunately, his time at Barcelona was remembered for more than what he did with the ball at his feet. First, he was dealt a bout of hepatitis, then a broken ankle caused by a reckless tackle by athletic Bilbao's Doni Goigokche, who was nicknamed the Butcher of Bilbao. However, an incident in the 1984 Copa del Rey final marked the end of Maradona's Barcelona career. After receiving Ooh. another hard tackle by the Butcher, as well as being taunted with racist insults related to his father's Native American ancestry throughout the game by Bilbao fans. Therefore, he finally snapped when Bilbao's Miguel Sola provoked him at the end of their 1-0 loss. Maradona aggressively got up, stood inches from Sola's face, and the two exchanged words. This started a chain reaction of emotional reactions from both teams. Using expletives, Sola mimicked a gesture from the crowd towards Maradona by using a xenophobic term. Maradona, understandably, headbutted Sola, elbowed another Bilbao player in the face, and kneed another in the head, knocking him out cold. The Bilbao squad surrounded Maradona to exact some revenge, with the butcher connecting a high kick to his chest, before the rest of the Barcelona squad joined to help Maradona. From this point, Barcelona and Bilbao players brawled on the field, with Maradona in the center of the action, kicking and punching anyone in a Bilbao shirt. The mass brawl was played out in front of an audience of 100,000 fans in the stadium, and more than half of Spain watching on live television. Fans also began throwing solid objects onto the field at the players, coaches, and even photographers, with a total of 60 people ending up getting injured. This incident sealed Maradona's exit from Barcelona. However, despite this, Maradona was still the best footballer on the planet, and Barcelona were able to recoup a world record fee from Napoli for the Argentinian. This made Maradona the first person in 48 years to break the transfer record twice, with his reputation in Napoli being completely different than it is in Barcelona. He'd single-handedly drag Napoli to their first two league titles, and led Argentina to World Cup glory in 1986. A true god in Naples, the club stadium was renamed to the Stadio Diego Armando Maradona following his death in 2020. The next decade would see AC Milan and Juventus swap the record from Rude Hullet in 87 to Roberto Baggio in 90 to Jean-Pierre Papin in 1992, then beaten in the same year by Gianluca Vialli before finally settling in Milan that same year with Gianluca Lentini. Lentini is the least known of those players, but his story 
is fascinating. At just 23, Lentini was seen as the brightest talent in Italian football, with the winger quickly becoming a key man for his boyhood club Torino. Lentini became a key component for Milan during his first season, under manager Fabio Capello, scoring seven league goals as they won a league title. However, he suffered a severe car crash during his second pre-season at the club, at just 24 years of age. He was dragged from the record seconds before it caught fire, and was placed in an induced coma for two days. He fractured his skull and damaged an eye socket. He returned to the pitch at the end of the 93-94 season, playing sporadically as Milan retained their league title and won the Champions League. Unfortunately, Lentini suffered long-term effects to his memory and vision, which caused notable decline in his football ability. His former teammate, Marcel Desailly, has since stated, You could see the skills, how he was before the crash and after the crash. Everything was completely different. His career in Milan fizzled out, playing irregularly for three seasons in which he only scored six league goals, finally departing the club in 1996 when his contract expired making him one of the sadder transfer record stories. 1996 was also the year his record was finally broken, when the phenomenon himself, Ronaldo Nazario, moved from PSV to Barcelona for £13.2 million. Similar to Maradona, Ronaldo's time in Catalan was relatively short, with Ronaldo leaving for Inter Milan up to just one year, also for a world record fee. To find out more about why he left, after just a year and how injuries impacted his time in Milan, check out my latest video on Ronaldo. Sandwiching the Ronaldo transfers, Alan Shearer's move from Blackburn to Newcastle brought the transfer record back to England for the first time in 45 years. The greatest goal scorer in Premier League history made the move back to his boyhood club, infamously turning down Manchester United despite Sir Alex Ferguson making concrete efforts to try and convince Shearer. Shearer's time at Newcastle was iconic, becoming the top scorer in the club's history and refusing to ever leave his boyhood club, retiring in 2006, holding the record for the most goals in Premier League history. However, he wasn't able to secure Newcastle's first major trophy since 1955, going from one of the most successful record transfers to one of the least. In 1998, Real Betis became the second Spanish football club to ever break the transfer record when they signed 20-year-old Sao Paulo winger Danielson. A regular since the age of 17, Danielson was seen as the next big talent coming out of Brazil in an era where Ronaldo and Rivaldo had clubs chasing the next South American superstar. However, unlike them, Danielson never put up great output for Sao Paulo. Rather, he was known mainly for having an amazing range of skills and tricks. Betis was so confident of his star power, however, and they gave him a 10-year contract worth around 40 grand a week. At the end of the 99-2000 season, Betis were relegated, Danielson having found the net just five times across his first two seasons. Those tricks were simply not translating into output or points. After gaining promotion in 2001, the Brazilians' importance in the side began to wane, with the emergence of Wavuakin, meaning by the time of his final season at Batiste came around in 2004-05, Danielson was a very expensive bit part player. Danielson would then play a season at Bordeaux before beginning a nomadic career, playing in Saudi Arabia, America, Brazil and Vietnam, before finally retiring in 2010, aged 32, after being released by Greek side Kavala, having failed to make an appearance for the club. The record would once again return to Italy, with Inter Milan signing Lazio star forward Christian Vieri for £32 million with Lazio themselves breaking that record a year later in 2000 to sign a replacement in Hernan Crespo. What we didn't know at the time was that Crespo's record would be beaten less than a month later and would never return to Italy again, ending one of the greatest eras in football history. Football had now fully globalised and Italy was being left behind. Real Madrid was the prime example of this change. President Florentino Perez worked wonders in maximising the commercial opportunities for the club, making them a household name around the world. One of the main ways he achieved this was through his Galacticos, 
To put it into context how much focus Perez had on maximising the commercial potential of the club, he signed David Beckham in 2003, despite already having Luis Figo in that position. In the recent David Beckham Netflix documentary, when asked why he signed Beckham, Perez simply answered that he could triple his revenue. Speaking of Figo, his move to Real Madrid was the first Galactico to break the transfer record in a deal which is by far the most controversial record transfer of all time. Figo was playing for Real Madrid's biggest rivals, Barcelona, and was on course to win the Ballon d'Or. A move across the aisle was seen as impossible. But Florentino Perez, an outsider in the Real Madrid presidential election, claimed he could guarantee Figo's arrival in Madrid if he were elected. Perez even approached Figo's agent with a deal which guaranteed Figo commitment to sign for Real Madrid in the case that he won the election in exchange for £1.6 million. This was accepted by Figo despite not wanting to leave Barcelona as he would be guaranteed the money even if Perez was to not be elected, which was seen as extremely likely as the current president, Lorenzo Sanz, had just led the club to two Champions League victories in the previous three seasons. The agreement was leaked to the public, however, causing a complete meltdown in the Spanish football world. Figo denied the agreement was real and claimed Perez was using him as a ploy to win votes for the election, even making the infamous statement, I'm not so mad to do a thing like that. However, Perez stayed firm behind his claims, stating that if he were to win the election and Figo didn't join, all Real Madrid members would go to the Bernabeu free the next season. Funded by a £19 million clause in his agreement with Figo, which was required to be paid by Figo if he were not to join Real Madrid in the case Perez became president. In a shock result, Perez was elected the new Real Madrid president, with his first action in charge of Real Madrid being to activate Figo's £37 million release clause. Figo wanted Barcelona to pay the £19 million clause for him so he could stay, but Barcelona refused, meaning in July 2000, Figo was presented to the Real Madrid fans as the first Galactico, and a true punch to the guts of Barcelona fans around the world. On each of his returns to the Camp Nou, Figo was abused like no other before him, infamously having a pig's head thrown at him whilst he was attempting to take a corner. Figo would end up playing for Real Madrid for five years, where he maintained his reputation as one of the best players in the world. Real Madrid would break their own record a year later, signing the 1998 Ballon d'Or winner and best midfielder on the planet, Zinedine Zidane. Just like Figo, Zidane would spend five years in the Spanish capital, maintaining his reputation as one of the best players in the world, famously scoring one of the best goals in Champions League history against Bayer Leverkusen in the 2002 final. He surprisingly made the decision during the 05-06 season to retire at the end of the 2006 World Cup, stating he wanted to retire at the top of the game. He was still one of Madrid's best players that season, finishing the season as their second top scorer and a sister. Like with Cruyff, Zidane actually achieved more silverware with the club as a manager, famously leading Real Madrid to back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back Champions League trophies between 2016 and 2018. The Galactico era continued until 2006, with the signings of Ronaldo Nazario, David Beckham and Michael Owen. However, none of these broke Zidane's record, with the club failing to win a trophy for three consecutive seasons between 2003 and 2006, leading to Perez resigning as president. However, just three years later, Perez returned after being the only candidate for the presidential election. Just like with Figo in his first spell in 2000, Perez wanted to make a statement in his first transfer window, and that he did, breaking the transfer record not once, but twice in 2009, securing the services of the previous two Ballon d'Or winners. Firstly, he secured Kaka, the pride of Brazil, for £56 million. Kaka's four years at Real Madrid were ultimately quite disappointing. The first couple of years were extremely hampered by injury, which saw the club invest in an extremely talented and promising 21-year-old German international, Mesut Ozil. This meant Kaka had serious competition for his position, with Ozil being given a serious run in the team at the beginning of the 2010-11 season whilst he was out injured. Unfortunately for Kaka, Ozil really impressed the new boss, Jose Mourinho, meaning when he returned to fitness, 
he became a squad player. Kakla, like many players, had a dysfunctional relationship with Jose Mourinho. Since stating that, whenever I thought I might get a chance, it never happened. I didn't get the chance to prove my form to him. I trained hard, fought, and prayed so much. But without the coach having faith in me, I realized I couldn't work with him. Kako would return to AC Milan in 2013, but would never be the same electrifying player that he was known for before joining Real Madrid. The second player Real Madrid signed that summer, who also broke the transfer record, was a little-known Portuguese winger named Cristiano Ronaldo. As everyone knows, Ronaldo would cement himself as one of the greatest footballers to ever play the game during his nine-year spell in the Spanish capital, scoring 450 goals in 438 matches, becoming the club's all-time record goal scorer, adding another four Ballon d'Ors to his collection, and would win 15 trophies, including four Champions Leagues. He left the club in 2018, aged 33, for Juventus, in a deal which still saw Real Madrid profit on their greatest player of all time. Five years before Ronaldo left, however, Real Madrid broke their transfer record for the fifth consecutive time, this time for the brightest talent in the Premier League, Gareth Bale. On the back of carrying an average Spurs side to a fifth place finish in the Premier League, scoring 26 and assisting 14, Bale was seen as the perfect start to complement Cristiano Ronaldo and Karim Benzema. One of the fastest and most explosive players in the world, Bale would be one of the key men in getting Real Madrid over the line to win their first Champions League trophy in 12 years, scoring the goal in extra time which gave them a lead against Atletico Madrid in the final and also scoring the greatest Copa del Rey final goal ever, topped off an amazing first season in Madrid for Gareth Bale. However, he started to sustain consistent muscle problems. Bale would continue, however, to be one of the best players in the world, especially at the biggest moments of the season best showcased by the 2018 Champions League final. Despite this, his final four seasons at the club would become toxic. Injuries loaded up, with many people suggesting he was faking them so he could play more for Wales, even being sent out on loan back to Tottenham for the 2020-21 season. Bale's last season at Madrid would see him collect a fifth Champions League medal and would leave the club being regarded as one of, if not the greatest British footballer to ever play the game. The final time a Premier League side broke the transfer record was in 2016, when Manchester United spent £89 million to re-sign academy graduate Paul Pogba. A player who United had lost on a free to Juventus four years earlier, Pogba had established himself as the best young midfield talent in the world. A complete footballer, technically perfect with a wicked eye for a pass, and a deadly long shot in addition to his 6 foot 3 figure. Pogba had become a key man in a Juventus side who were making consistently deep runs in Europe and in a French side who had just reached the Euros final and would win the World Cup final just two years later. Unfortunately for Pogba and Manchester United, this transfer didn't work out for either party. It became quickly clear that Jose Mourinho wasn't the Frenchman's biggest fan with Pogba also not seemingly enjoying Mourinho's defensive approach to the game. Manchester United continued to be a mess throughout Pogba's six seasons at the club, never building a team capable of playing consistently high-level football. And Pogba, unlike greats of the game, couldn't carry a team on his shoulders and thrived more in the French side when he was surrounded by other greats. He returned to Juventus in 2022 following the expiration of his Manchester United contract, but has been limited to just eight games for the club due to a number of injuries and now being banned for alleged drug use. In 2017, Pogba's record was not just broken, but completely demolished by Neymar's move from Barcelona to PSG. This was the single biggest proportional jump since Fred Weldon's move in 1896. Neymar was never expected to leave Barcelona with the clause which is required by law in Spain, never being expected to be paid. However, PSG, owned by Qatar, were willing to spend the money to secure one of the brightest players in the world. Neymar also agreed to leave, stating a desire to get out of Messi's shadow and hopefully win a Ballon d'Or. Neymar would continue to be one of the best players in the world during his time at PSG, despite what media outlets would try to tell you. 
scoring 118 goals and assisting 77 in 173 games, a better output rate than at either of his previous clubs. Unfortunately for PSG, however, was Neymar's availability. A player who had never experienced serious injury problems at Santos or Barcelona, PSG could never have expected him to miss 136 games in just six seasons at the club. These injuries would often come at crucial parts of the season. In addition to his injury problems, a new star emerged in his absence with Kylian Mbappe ascending to be the new star in Paris. The two's relationship has been reported to be icy at best, with many reports suggesting that Mbappe, who has gained a lot of power at the club, being the main man pushing the Brazilian out the club last summer. With Neymar finally leaving the club to Saudi Arabia in 2023, having failed to win a Champions League in Paris or ever win the Ballon d'Or. Seven years on from the record being set by Neymar, it is yet to be broken, with nobody except Mbappe himself getting close to Neymar's fee. The next decade will show whether Neymar can break Bernabeu Ferreira's 17-year run, or whether someone will take the crown off the Brazilian great to become the most expensive footballer in the world.